What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got for you what I am calling the new meta for budget gaming and building for 2024. Let's go. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, Dan, what exactly are you talking about? First off, it's not even 2024 yet, and you would be absolutely correct. But what I'm talking about is, well, little old Dell Optiplex here is about to be completely obsolete. And you might be asking yourself, well, what the heck does that exactly mean? Well, what that means is the Dell Optiplex, as great as it has been, especially for me and my channel, and it being such a goat of an option for budget gaming, and right now they are cheaper than all get out. I got this one with a i7 7020, 16 gigs RAM for like 50 bucks. But the problem with that is the platform has aged so much to this point, I and mean, we're talking about 10 years or so or more, that it does not meet the requirements for Windows 11, and Windows 10 is going to be dropping support in October of 2024. So we're literally less than a year away. Hold the phone there for a second. I misspoke and somehow I confused 2024 and 2025. So correction, Microsoft drops Windows 10 support, meaning no longer get any kind of security updates or any kind of software support in 2025 of October. Although we may have at least one more year on top of what I was previously saying with this Dell Optiplex, it's not really a good platform to, I think, to be getting into into 2024 just because you basically got a year and some change left. So the idea here with this video is something that would become the new meta, something that we could look into and future proof ourselves. Future proof meaning is the big meaning here. So anywho, sorry about that correction, but back to the normal video. So what does this other machine here have anything to do with that? Well, first off, it's really cheap to get. It's a lot more powerful than a Dell Optiplex and it supports Windows 11. So let's get into talking about what exactly this is here off to my left, your right, and why it's gonna become the new meta. So I figured the best way to talk about what I'm after here is to actually take us on a tour of this machine and tell you all about it. So what we got here is a ThinkStation from Lenovo, the P520 Workstation. All right, so we got it open, and the big thing here I wanna talk about is the massive price to performance of this workstation and why I am calling it the new meta because there is so much here to offer for such a little price. I happen to get this model here from a reseller on eBay for only $165. These machines originally retailed for starting at $1,500 just six to seven years ago. So you're talking about a massive amount of power and performance for such a little price. So good. So on the subject of performance, let's first talk about what's underneath this tower cooler, which is a pretty nice cooler. It is a Xeon processor, the W2135. So that is six cores, 12 threads, which is going to meet our needs in terms of core count for modern gaming, but it also meets our needs for frequency. This chip actually runs at 3.7 gigahertz and can turbo all the way up to 4.5 gigahertz. That really kind of almost puts it on the level of a Ryzen 26 to 3600 type of performance. So there's a lot here. So next moving on to what we got here is the memory. This one particularly came with a 16 gig DIMM. I'll just take it out for reference here so we can see what we got here. But this is a 16 gig DIMM from SK Hynix. So that is the only downfall right now in my current state is the seller put 16 gigs into this machine, but only put it in one DIMM. So in order to at least get it running in dual channel, we're gonna have to populate the left side RAM slots here, which there is a diagram on the back of the panel here. Uh, quad channel is not gonna be super necessary, but obviously if we want to really max it out, this thing supports loads and loads and loads of RAM. So what we'll do is add an additional 16 gig DIMM to fully populate at least the dual channel side to give us 32 gigs for a very cheap price. That is a small drawback to buying a workstation like this. The memory support isn't gonna support super high speeds like you see with more consumer grade, and you're not gonna have an ability to really enable some type of XMP profile like you normally are used to seeing. So what you really wanna focus on doing is getting a DIMM that operates at the highest supported frequency of this workstation, which is 2666. So we've got one DIMM here with that covered. I do have another one on order for that only cost me 20 bucks. So we'll have a total of 32 gigs here because we are doing some upgrades. Speaking of upgrades, obviously there is a major component here missing that we are gonna have to upgrade to to actually enable this thing to game and that be the GPU. 
Now this is PCIe Gen 3 because it just predates Gen 4, but we still can throw in quite a beefy GPU into the system for multiples of factors. One, we have tons of space to do so, and there's actually another X16 slot right below this one here at the top. So we've got plenty of space to throw in something large, and we have space within the chassis itself. So, I mean, we're talking about a very long supported graphics card if we want to put it in there. Additionally, what we got here in the main big factor of being able to support a good GPU is power delivery. So right down here, we've got a 900 watt 80 plus platinum power supply. So let me pull that out here. Now this part is very proprietary, extremely proprietary. So there won't be any type of power supply swapping going on, but with 900 watts, we don't need it. So here is our platinum rating. Just this thing is a chonker as far as its ability to power pretty much anything that we can throw at it. So on the subject of that, obviously we saw no cables hanging out. This has a proprietary power connection that basically delivers all the power directly to the motherboard. And then there's little daughter boards or connectors that come off the motherboard that actually supply power to other components. So what does that mean for our GPU? Well, pretty simple. There's already some attached PCIe cables hanging off of the motherboard. And these are what is really important here, two, six, plus two pin, so a total of eight pins each, two of these running off the motherboard. So imagine the amount of GPU that we can put into this system, 900 watts plus two eight pins. Other cool things here is they, you know, hanging off the motherboard connection too. We have SATA power to power up some hard drives. There's three and a half inch sleds or three and a quarter inch sleds and, or to also adapt to 2.5 inch. There's already a SATA cable ran. So this thing is just ready to go. But one really cool thing that I want to point out too, that we never got with the Dell Optiplex, at least the ones that I covered is this right here. If I can get this off without, too much trouble, here we go. Hey, look, it's a heat sink. No, actually, well, it is. But what we have right here is two slots for NVMe M.2 drives. When I said about this thing being pretty modern, I wasn't joking. We've got a lot of support for modern, what you'd expect gaming PCs to have, and this thing's basically got all of it. So we've got some upgrade ideas that I've already done some research for and bought that we'll discuss next that'll make this thing into a PC gaming powerhouse. So I think now you can see why I'm considering this to be the new meta for budget gaming and building. There's just so much here to offer. So let's talk about what I have in store for upgrades. And then we're gonna just get right into what it can actually do. We'll start off with the small things here first and that first one being the RAM. As mentioned, we only have this one DIMM that was installed on the motherboard. I've got another one on order from eBay on the way, but it just simply isn't here. So I'll put a screenshot up here on the screen. But what we're doing here is basically just getting it into dual channel mode so we can optimize the performance by utilizing dual channel. So I did take to eBay, order a 16 gig DIMM, main thing being at the highest rated speed that this will support out of the box 2666 for a total of 32 gigs. And I only spent 20 additional dollars getting one more DIMM. Now you could actually go with more consumer grade memory like this, this HyperX one that I got just off my test bench. But the problem with this is this will run at the bare minimum speed of 2133 megahertz out of the box. And there's no way to actually get more speed out of your, out of your memory on this type of platform. There's no XMP, like I mentioned. So what you want to target doing is buying RAM that works at its highest rated speed, which I found on eBay for 20 bucks, 2666 megahertz, another 16 gigs. You did the math there. We're gonna have a lot of memory at a decent speed, not real, real fast, because that's not what this platform supports, but we're gonna get the best out of it we possibly can. Talking more about the small things here, and there really isn't a whole lot to add on when it comes to converting these things into gaming PCs, just like the Dell Optiplex, we've got ourselves an NVMe drive. Like I said earlier and showed you guys, this system can support two NVMe drives, as well as additional hard drives and SSDs, which we're gonna just basically steer away from because we can actually use NVMe. You wanna use that if you possibly can. But staying in tune with the budget side of things here, like I said, we can really max this thing out, but we're not gonna do that because it's just gonna cost a ton of money. I just went to my OG go-to NVMe drive, a team group, 512 gigabyte NVMe drive for only, I think I paid like $33. It actually, the prices did come up a little bit from previous Black Friday sales. So hopefully that comes down a little bit, but generally you can get these for about anywhere in the ballpark of 25 to $30 ish. Now you might have a gripe about that being, oh, it's a 512 gig drive. Feel free to spend another 10 to $15 and actually get yourself a one terabyte drive. In fact, I encourage that. But basically what I was after here is the minimal amount of spend with the most performance. Last thing here, and it's a big one, is the GPU. 
I got a gigantic GPU. I also found on eBay used an RX 5700 XT. And I think I found probably the biggest one that they ever created. I was not aware that these things got this big. But what I think I found was a miner. I've bought from miners plenty of times, but I think I found a miner who was selling these in bulk. So aside from, you know, just some blemishes on this GPU, this thing is basically in beautiful condition. I definitely support buying from miners if you can find some good deals. Do be careful because sometimes buying from miners, you might have some really dirty, nasty GPUs or flashed BIOS that are only for mining. Just be careful when you're doing that. I happen to find a really good one. But if you're not new to the channel, then you know also that I've used 5700 XTs here recently and we can expect some really good gaming performance. So the main idea was why I was targeting a 5700 XT is simply price to performance. These things can be found super cheap. A comparable GPU on the Nvidia side is about a 2070. 2070 super they do command a little bit more of a price but you know think of that as far as you know what you can get there and what you can expect to put into something like this so all in all what i've spent on this pc to get it gaming ready obviously we've got the core lenovo p520 for just 165 dollars we had to buy an extra dim for another 20 dollars our ssd for 30 dollars and the gpu for 140 dollars all that totaling up comes into 355 dollars total for a full system build that I think is gonna be one heck of a performer. So I can't wait to see what it's gonna do. Let's get these components into the system and get it benchmarked.
Well guys, I think the benchmarks pretty much speak for themselves. This thing is a banger of a budget gaming system and for well under $400. The only real downside I could say honestly with something like this is obviously we're limited to what the hardware has to offer and this one in particular the CPU is a little bit of a bottleneck if you compare something to like a Ryzen 2600 or 3600 like I kind of mentioned earlier in the video however the bottleneck is not something that's detrimental at all it's just something that you know that you can get probably a little more performance out of a 5700 XT. That said the idea here was get something on a budget that has a future and can game well. One last thing to note here too guys, if you did have a real keen eye, you saw that I was benchmarking on Windows 10, simply only because I have all these titles already installed on a Windows 10 SSD, and that would have you know cut into my time. So anyway, going forward, I am going to be using Windows 11 to benchmark all my titles. If you do look this up, Lenovo does show that it is supported for Windows 11, so you are good there, and that was one of the main points I was trying to make earlier. But all in all guys, I think this type of machine will remain the meta going forward into 2024 and beyond it's got the space it's got the power and we've got ability to make upgrades unlike something like a Dell Optiplex that are one old or two too small if you're using more of the modern ones to actually make these types of upgrades but if you did enjoy the video make sure you give it a like and subscribe on the way out thanks for tuning into this one though I appreciate your time and I will catch you guys in the next one